Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero and welcome to Morbid, The Seven Acolytes. A top-down perspective horror action game that describes itself as being influenced by games like Bloodborne and featuring a lot of disgusting Cronenberg-like monsters. People of Mornia. When the Kaharis came, the people of Mornia were disgruntled by the new deities, suddenly imposed upon them. They had served the great voice Magrathus for hundreds of years, were quite content with how things were going. Despite the initial indignation, over time the tyranny of the Gaharis prevailed, and the reign of terror divided people into groups. There were those who gladly chose to serve the new gods, those who still secretly continued worshipping Magrathus, and some poor sods who could not handle the mental strain of a new abysmal world. But Rava chose to ease her madness with a bottle. The village of Er Abba is one of the last safe heavens of Mornia, where hostility and fear has completely overwhelmed the hearts of the villagers. For a striver, moments of serenity are short and far between, but in Air Abba, one could take a break, talk to the villagers, and do business with the friendly merchants of the parish. So, this is a game that is currently in development. It is part of the PAX 2020 previews. Um, Skins PAX obviously is not actually happening this year, it is all online, and they're showcasing a lot of indie games that would have not been showcased otherwise. Looks like our village is, uh, a little bit, um, infected by the, uh, the Lovecraftian. Hold shift to run. Stone into brown. Crombie's canister. Plus one to four to use items. Straightforward. Q to talk about inventory. So we have a gun, a sword, and we got some items in our inventory here. Crombie's canister. At the invention of gas-powered guns, most gunsmiths stopped producing gunpowder-based firearms, since it turned out gas was a much more efficient and powerful propellant. There was no need for traditional muskets and rifles anymore. The very first gas guns were pistols, but over time gunsmiths became skilled at applying gas-based mechanics to any and all types of firearms. Still, it was only after the now legendary gunsmith of De Brum, Adibus Crombie, invented the universal gas canister for all types of guns to share, when the gas gun market truly took off. Now that gas guns are the standard and everybody's using Crombie's canisters, have their whispers about a new, even more potent energy source between the market and not so distant future. So it's just the ammo refill. Sword of de Brom. In the Order of de Brom, every to be strivers to be allowed a Sword of de Brom as they begin their training. It's a fine sword and can serve one past the years of training. On the blade, there's an engraving all strivers must learn by heart. All hope and mirth may flee, but one day the earth and sea shall beget the sole survivor. By dying light, the lowly striver. Sentinel's sign arm. Many affordable rifles were commissioned from design by Master Crombie for the Sentinels of Yortail, also known as the Eyes of Yortail. Atop the great walls surrounding the city, these hawk eyed guards would watch over the residents of the capital with a waving vigilance. Any acts of transgression on the inside or attempts of intrusion on the outside were met with a bullet between the eyes. Warning shots were rarely fired. The Eyes of Yortail guard no more. The legacy lives on and a few functioning rifles still out there, scattered on Mornia. A lot of lore in this game already. Press one to heal. So the little hearts are the health items. Just let Mouse attack. We already kind of figured that out on our own. Excuse me, I'm just smashing your barrels. Some kind of loot, medicine pellets. Picked up something. I don't know what it was. It looks like some, uh. Perhaps it's a healing item of some sort. What's this? Lesser Rune of Rage. Best in pellets. Regenerates sanity and takes less sanity damage for a short time. Only the most affluent citizens, priests, and aristocrats can afford to purchase Altidote to cure their ailments. The poor commoners are invariably forced to sell for the cheaper and weaker alternative medicine pellets. Medicine pellets do not cure any conditions or regenerate health, but rather soothe and temporarily invigorate the patient, which is why they're also known as the drag out drug, since in most cases they merely prolong the inevitable, using the mind of the fatally ill. Lesser Rune Rage, forged by the Frocious God Balgahar. 
Add fire to a weapon. Attach that to the item. I have my doubts that we'll get another weapon in this demo. I think they want us to shoot this at you specifically. So that's how we detonate and clear out these walls. What we got here? That's a rune of panic. When they chant runes of Phyrex, greeted by the dreadful god Gelahar. Electricity. Can we have both properties in our weapon? I don't see why not. Tap space while moving to dodge roll. Put left mouse button to special attack. It's more just like a stronger swing. Let's go south. I saw some. You look like you made an enemy. Ah! Some kind of like psychic attack. Some kind of like s scream. Stone of Debrom. That might explode. I'm a little scared. No. No dead, thankfully. Yeah, no, we ain't dealing with that. Ah. Now the ammo. Put you over there. For the time being. So I'm assuming purple attacks are sanity. You can kind of see on the left there, it looks like it's linked to our brain. Oh, it has a pretty big radius. We should specifically use our guns for enemies like that. Hey buddy, got some loot for me? Genetically modified broccoli. Okay. <laughs> After Mad Men's moss covered Mornia, many lost dominant plants became increasingly endangered. One such organism was the delicate Lazarus flower. This powerful and rare, and rare remedial plant would have surely vanished altogether if not for the mayor's wife, who adored the scent of the flower. She ordered the plant to be preserved in her garden, and so it was. Though finding an actual petal nowadays is extremely rare, the intoxicating scent of Lazarus flowers still lingers strong in the vicinity of Fort Mornia as do the several flora souls and wandering hollows in each of the vines of the plant. Engendered, rather. Now there is a slot in the gun, it looks like. I should maybe... If I get another slot, I should put some kind of, um... slot into the gun. Give our gun some properties. Can I roll into barrels? No. It would've been nice. Man, this is that, this is that top-down RPG feel, just smashing burls and hoping for loot. Ammo too. That's nice. You okay, buddy? You look pretty rough.
Are you guys just kind of tolerant that your village is kind of infected with all these things? Your level of sanity affects the damage you deal and take, the amount of XP you earn, the amount of specters you face. Specters. So we're not fully accurate, even if we aim at the same spot. We sometimes look like we, uh, kind of shoot off center. Probably not as big of an issue with a giant enemy. Now I'm gonna use the blue item. I'm not quite sure what that is. Let me see. Crow's pretty strong. Ah, my mind. Hello, Wartburg steroids. Street's liquid. In one's point of view, drinking unidentified beverage is either extremely hazardous or admirably adventurous. Use to generate health over a short period of time while slightly draining sanity. Mr. Wartburg is well known for his many amazing inventions, one of which is the formula for Wartburg steroids. Ice Shroom. Rune Remover. One to fully purify weapon. As the old Utimum form book goes, removes all runes from a weapon. I guess you only, like, use it once. I think we're fine right now, though. Worry about that later. Pig. A better weapon? 20 damage. Yeah. Straight upgrade. Another weapon. The axe. Less weapon speed, a lot more damage. Let's try this. Only two slots, too. Also known as the Old Healing Handle, the Axe is a formal weapon with the power to invigorate its wielder. Yes, that's exactly what it says. This two-hand axe forged by Grug the Rugged, the blacksmith of House Grimmauld, was originally made to be a gift to his sick brother, when affected by the flesh plant working as a woodcutter. In an effort to help his brother, Grug infused the entire handle of the weapon with liquefied cardinor, which gave Axe's unprecedented remedial powers. So it did prolong his brother's life, but only momentarily. It is quite a bit slower, though. Some enemies over there. Quite a bit, actually. Load. A little better. All clear. And we get lightning shroom. Uh, there's a big enemy over there. Face breakers. Fast weapon, basically. Everything's a straight upgrade over most of these weapons, though. Only one slot. Consumes a lot of stamina real fast.
I wanna get damage this thing. There it goes. Decent. So this is the... This is pretty good balance of, uh... Weaponry. 30 damage. One slot, though. Faster but weaker. Careful. Looks like it sends up thorns in a circle around it. You can either stay in the center and fight it there. I'm not sure if it has a melee attack if you get too close. Or get the hell out of dodge. And it can be destroyed. It also looks like it puts out acid blood. Let's try see if I can land that axe hit. Like that. That'll work. Oh, there's another enemy. He is faster and stronger. Now it's dead. What do we get? Flesh p plant petal. Use to gain more attack speed for a short period of time and lose sanity. Flesh plant, also known as the bad man's moss, is an invasive parasitic organism. This fungus like life form can leech off any biological entity. It is even known to reanimate the dead, with its ability to overtake and develop whole nervous systems. Consuming flesh plant is considered to be extremely dangerous. The effects of digesting the pellets are largely unknown, though some say they may, among other effects, enhance stamina, health, and vigilance of the feeder. So you could theoretically, um, I feel like you could consume one and then just take some sanity healing items real quick. Let me switch up to a faster weapon. Thank you. Looks like you had some ammo. Trusty blaster. I'm kind of upset I wasted these ruins. The... This weapon is stronger, just because I think the ruin maybe amplified it. It's an old sidearm. It's, oh, it's a shotgun, I see why. So it's probably doing less damage, but has... Spread? Yeah. Let's weaken him up a little bit. All good. So, one versus one, it'd probably be better with the, uh... Unless each of those pellets does more damage on a large target. It's like a boss zone I'm about to enter. Gardens of Mornia. Of her grief. Lady Tristan had always had but one wish, to bear a child. She and her husband, the Mayor of Mornia, had tried for many years to produce an heir to no avail. Time was rapidly running out for the aging couple. The great Grahers arrived. As her last resort, Lady Tristana prayed for the deity go Dolgahar to grant her a child. Dolgahar agreed to help, if the lady would pledge to serve her. Tristana agreed, and soon after she found herself pregnant. Weeks passed, and Tristana became increasingly ill. She was nearly feverish, had agonizing stomach cramps, and even suffered spasmodic seizures. She also began to lose her mind as her once kind and loving personality was slowly replaced by a cruel and raving demeanor. She became paranoid of everyone around her dismissing her whole staff and even blaming her beloved husband for plotting against her and the unmoored child. On the day of the baby was due, a series of monstrous screams could be heard coming from the mayor's estate. Soon after, the mayor himself, with glassy dead eyes and cadaverous stalled face, ran out and scrambled across the masses of expectant villagers. He continued on in silence all the way to the infamous Grimwald's Grove, never to be seen again. No one knows what happened, nor has anyone dared to find out. 
though the villagers swear they could still hear a woman's voice humming a lullaby if they ever wanted too close to the estate. No oh boy. Travel, meditate. I guess meditate just regenerates everything. So this would be the equivalent of our bonfire or a checkpoint, uh, whatever you want to call it. Press right mouse button to parry. I just shot my gun. Okay, there we go. I have to tap it. Hey, guys. And I still can't fit through here, but I'm probably going to find something to kill up here. Which will solve that problem. Hey, buddy, no. I should get used to using the parry. I may need it for a future boss or something. That looks like a pod from Zombies Hate My Neighbors. Can I reach on him? I can. Ooh, parade rifle. Nice, straight upgrade. Looks so like we got some kind of. Well, didn't really, I thought he was going to be a little more aggressive than that, but he never even saw me. Looks like no one's interested in asking us any questions. Oh! Little one. Watch out these small ones. They probably do a lot of damage real fast. As you can see. Stone into brawn. Gotta be careful. Got a plant guy over there. Raven or crow, depending on whatever you want to call him to the north. Yeah, I'm feeling the axe. They're not as bad as they seem. They're kind of intimidating at first with a big health bar, but they really just don't really seem to do anything. Oh! My slow attack came back to haunt me. Wasn't much damage, though. Ow. Halberd. This looks good. Hmm. Stats are all worse, so all around. But maybe it has a longer reach. 
can't tell. Let's try it out. Secrets in the this grass? Nope. Okay, see you later. Like that. Don't meditate because I think that these respawns everything. Interesting items there. Crumby's musket. I never straight upgrade. Hey buddy, where'd you come from? Now this enemy, I'm not sure if it's an NPC or enemy. Sultan may enter. Okay, it's NPC. I got ourselves exalted. Let's look around a little bit more. Big guy. You faster weapon. Whoops! Actually, draw my weapon. Okay, we're good. No, I dropped it because I don't have any inventory space because everything's a mess. Yeah, don't want to lose that. Yeah, I don't want to be with all those small ones. They can kill me. Now, I'm not sure if we can punish party big swings from big enemies or if it's some kind of like thing where you want to dodge rather than party something like that it's hard to tell without experimenting and taking a big hit later Take that out. Yeah, that is one advantage of this, the uh, halberd. It's got a, a wide swing and it's got a poke. So that's working out well with all these small enemies mixed in with the big ones. I can try a parry, hold up. So it did work, but you gotta be ready to um, follow up really fast afterwards. It's probably better if I'm using it like I'm cornered and can't dodge.
Okay, that is a big one. Watch that acid blood. May not be over. That everyone blew up, remember? Oh, one above us. Whoops. Take that one out. The rest two should go down pretty quickly. Crows. Yeah, there's always a glimmer. For the party window. But they come right at you right after that. So, like, you gotta have to, like, get that party ready right after that hit. This one's got a... sword and board? <laughs> May not be a good thing. This one I probably have to party. Or dodge at the last minute. Strong attacks also work. No, party didn't work that well after all. Hmm, unless I'm not doing the party right. Should run by some of these enemies. We don't discuss. Some ammo. Um, there is killer broccoli. And it drops broccoli, which I should really expected. We're getting a little grand here. Clear that out. Bad spot to fight this thing. Can you even attack me if I'm above or beyond below you? No. You have to be up lined up to my side. But I can attack up, so you essentially have a hard weakness right here. I should use that broccoli sometimes. We haven't really fought like a boss or a really tough enemy though. 
more enemies up here. Now, I could be wrong, it could be that the blood does not hurt, but it looks kind of like acid blood, so I don't mess with it. Yeah, that's acid blood. It was hitting the grass. It took some damage. Worth it. I get some full heal items here. Oh, there's so many of them. Well, you know what? Let's try. Forty five seconds. Okay. Nice. Watch out for that acid blood. All good. Some more of these really good healing items. This is a demo. If we come to the boss, I'm just going to use these. Move them over. Alright, let's see what's to the north. Boss fight? Yes. Oh, crud. Yeah, this is bad. Yeah, that was a bad combo. Enemies can follow you into the room. Don't. Make sure no enemies are following you at the moment. Okay, now that we hopefully don't have another enemy that followed us, we didn't realize. Careful. So she starts to swing. Some stamina. Ow. Ouch. Broccoli. All oh, the blood slows us down. You need to, like, get a little space. Where'd 
We're in a bad spot because we're running out of place with a dodge. She has infinite range during that. Whoops. One advantage if you dodge into her. Ow. over time. See, we, her melee attack is a little weaker. No, don't get greedy. Go in there with full stamina. My mind, the haze ebbs away. Please hurry. Release me from this curse. Send me to my child. If I lose myself again. Shh, mommy is on her way. Thought is finished. So that's it for Morbid and the Seven Acolytes, at least the demo of what's currently out. Uh, while I'm doing this post-commentary, you can see some of the screenshots and stuff of this game. Uh, fairly solid. They're calling this Souls-like. It makes me think of more of early Diablo, as in like Diablo 1, not Diablo 2. Although the aesthetic is definitely Bloodborne influence. I mean, they freely admit that in the description. But fairly solid game so far, um, especially aesthetically. There's probably some, like, some slight tweaks that need to be done in balancing and the kind of overall, I would describe it as like a game feel. But once again, definitely very cool. Very, very cool and promising game. Anyway, so thank you all for watching Play the Seven Acolytes. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.